this happens all the time. Students going to PA school, wanting to be physicians. Students going to optometry school, wanting to be physicians. Students going to physical therapy, wanting to be physicians. The Old Pre-Meds Podcast, session number 318. Welcome to the Old Pre-Meds Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, your host here every week where I take your non-traditional questions, now stolen from, taken from the Pre-Med Hangout over at premedhangout.com. Just use the hashtag non-trad question or old pre-meds question. We'll find it, whatever you want to use. Give us a, a well-thought-out question. Give us some backstory that you have and we'll pull those to answer them here on the podcast. Our question today is a couple of years old, but still very relevant. So you'll hear me mention some dates, ignore those. This is a great question for someone who may be coming from another healthcare field, especially if you're still in school. Before we jump in though, I wanna talk about the MCAT Minutes brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. If you are not listening, to the MCAT podcast, which is free every week, helping you break down a bunch of MCAT questions, helping you understand the process of the MCAT and what you should be doing right now as as this episode is coming out. We're releasing episodes all about what you should be doing as a first-year student, as a second-year student, as a third-year student, or as a non-traditional student, how to kind of think backwards as a someone who's four years away from uh, starting medical school, three years away from starting medical school, et cetera. Go check that out at mcatpodcast.com. That's a great podcast that I do with our good friends at Blueprint MCAT. All right, so let's jump into our question today from our student, They say, hello, I'm excited to talk about my story and discuss my plan to apply to medical school after the completion of my optometry degree, optometry school. Here's my backstory. I'm a current third year student at a well-known optometry school. I've genuinely enjoyed my time in optometry school and would not trade my years of schooling for anything. I've learned so much about the visual system and it all remains fascinating to me every day. I absolutely adore working with patients and being a resource that they can place complete trust in for their care. It is truly the reason I went into a field in healthcare to begin with. So why am I discussing why am I discussing medical school? I found that what drew me to optometry school, vision therapy and neurooptometry has really taken a back seat as far as my interest go and management of pathology involved with the ocular system has really become what I am passionate about. As an optometrist, medical management of ocular disease is available, but the surgical management is done solely by ophthalmology, rightfully so. Uh, Their words, not mine, Uh, although I do agree. I could certainly work alongside ophthalmology in certain modalities of practice, but I worry that not being able to manage cases because they are beyond my training or scope of practice will cause me to feel unfulfilled in my career. I've also found that I am fascinated by the retina and the systemic diseases that manifest uh, as retinal diseases, diabetes, hypertension, inflammatory conditions, etc. This is by far my favorite aspect of eye care and one that is virtually untouchable by optometry. I'm essentially looking to make a career change from optometry into ophthalmology, specifically a vitreo-retinal surgeon, as an end goal. I've met a few other doctors who have had the same realization as me and have made that transition, so I would certainly not be the first. I also should mention that although this is the front end goal, I would enter medical school with a completely open mind, and if my life takes me a different direction due to my interest in other specialties, I would be totally okay with that. My goals have changed throughout my life so far, and I'm completely okay with this happening again. I graduated from undergrad with an engineering degree and competitive grades, 3.77 GPA and 3.75 uh, science, and I'm currently in the top 5% of my class in optometry school. I have greater than 1,000 hours of patient care directly in optometry field through various jobs during undergrad and my first summer of optometry school. I will generate hundreds of more hours throughout my last two clinical years in optometry. I 
have also gained, also I have, I also have gained valuable non-clinical volunteer hours and community research during my time as a student in optometry school. I am involved in research at my institution as well and currently conducting a clinical research study. The only prereq that I have not completed is OCHEM 2, which was not required by most optometry schools. I have not yet taken the MCAT. My plan is to take the MCAT, and here's where the old dates are. Spring of 2022, so this is just last year, and hopefully apply for admission in the class of 2023. So it sounds like spring of 2022 MCAT and also apply in 2022. Is this goal feasible? Will my patient care only being an optometry be an issue? Will having such narrow experiences be seen as a negative to medical schools? I will need to increase my shadowing experience outside of ophthalmology and truly generate a broader picture of medicine. Any advice is welcome as the process can be daunting. Thank you in advance. Wow. All right. I, I don't know about you, but this sounds pretty, pretty straightforward to me. This sounds like a student who said, I want to be an optometrist, went to optometry school, all their experiences around optometry, uh, and realized, uh-oh, I want more. This happens all the time. Students going to PA school, wanting to be physicians. Students going to optometry school, wanting to be physicians. Students going to physical therapy, wanting to be physicians. There are lots of careers in healthcare out there, and there will always be a small percentage of people who go to a terminal degree, like being an obstetrician, obstetrician, (laughs) an an optician, (laughs) not an obstetrician, an optician, uh, having an OD degree, right, a doctor of optometry, and realizing, uh uh-oh, right, It's, it's considered a terminal degree, like this is your career, you don't need any more training after this, Yet there are always people that are like, well, it's terminal for this, but I want to jump over to this other thing. And there will always be a percentage of students, uh, of people in their career who do that. And there's nothing wrong with it. That's the fun thing about the country that we live in, that some people in other countries don't have that ability to do. They go to school for free. They get trained in a certain field. And it's like, hey, sorry, you can't go back to school because we only have the resources for you to go to school once, right? There's there's pros and cons to our system. Uh, And one of the pros is that if you want to pay more money to go back to school, here, go ahead, right? Have at it. Um, So for this student... The concern is, and and if you are a student who's a physical therapy student, who's a respiratory therapy, PA, whatever you are, right? If you're a vet and you're like, oh, I want human medicine now, there is nothing wrong with pressing pause, either finishing or pressing pause on your current degree and and doing the, the research that it takes to figure out if you want to either finish your degree or take a step away to work toward getting into medical school. There's nothing wrong with that. And you may be asked along the way of like, hey, Sally, why did you stop your other program? Or why did you just finish your program, not work at all in that field, and now you're applying to medical school? And if you have solid reasons like this student, who very eloquently said, hey, look, I went in thinking this, I am now more interested in this, and I can't do that thing. As an optometrist, I have to be an ophthalmologist if that's ultimately what my passions lie in and that's what I'm interested in doing and the patients that I'm interested in affecting and all of that good stuff. It's okay as long as you have a solid answer. Now, the concerns here are, number one, how is MCAT prep going to do? Going to go if you've been out of school, undergrad for a few years? How much prep is it going to take to get you back up to speed there? Uh, solid GPAs, uh, top five percent of class in optometry school. Obviously, this person is a good student. Let's hope they're also a good MCAT test taker. And so, go check out the MCAT podcast. And, and hopefully that will set you up for success. OCHEM 2, less of an issue for the MCAT. So maybe you don't need to finish that before studying for the MCAT, but uh, is obviously a big prereq for most schools. So 
MCAT aside, the the other issue here is, will it look bad if all of my experience is in and around optometry? And the answer is no, probably not, because you wanted to be an optometrist. And so it makes sense that all of your experiences are around optometry. And yes, this student also stated, hey, I'm gonna go have to, I'm gonna have to go shadow some more. Obviously, they have a lot of experience shadowing uh, or some experience shadowing ophthalmology, but can they also go shadow some family medicine, some internal medicine, some primary care stuff? There are some schools that care about that. Uh, I think it's less of an issue than other people may make it out to be. I know there, there are people out there that's like, you should shadow three doctors, one specialist, one primary care, whatever. Like, it's really hard to find one person to shadow. So I don't put as much weight into that, but there are some schools maybe that, that wanna see some primary care shadowing as well. But this student, I think, needs to uh, own the fact that they originally wanted to be an optometrist, and now they, at this point, want to be an ophthalmologist, even though in the personal statement, I talk about this all the time, the personal statement shouldn't be, hey, I want to be an ophthalmologist, hey, I want to be an ophthalmologist. A lot of your experiences are going to talk about the exposure that you had to these diseases of the eye and the retina, and, and yes, all signs point to ophthalmology, but you can take a step back potentially and talk bigger picture in terms of just taking care of deeper pathophysiology of patients, and that's what is encouraging you. And yes, as of right this minute, it happens to be pathophysiology of the eye, but who's to say, as you mentioned, who's to say you're not going to become interested in something else in the future? So I think this is awesome for anyone coming from another career field. Own it. This is where a lot of non-trads get scared, especially coming from another career field. They'll, they'll think, uh-oh, like, I'm not so sure that this is going to be looked upon well, but... I think you'd be surprised that schools and admissions committee members and just individuals reviewing applications would love to hear this story of like, wow, you were interested in optometry, you went to optometry school, and now you're here. Let's talk about that. Well, how did you get here? I think it's a, a very interesting conversation that one can have. So great question. Hopefully this is helpful, not only for you, even if you're not in optometry, but hey, if you are in optometry and you want to go to medical school, but for anyone else kind of in a different healthcare field, healthcare related field, hopefully this was helpful for you to, to really understand that you're not at a disadvantage coming from this other healthcare related field as long as you understand some of those nuances that we, we talked about. Don't forget to check out the MCAT podcast that I do with Blueprint MCAT. That's at mcatpodcast.com. Thank you, Blueprint MCAT, for sponsoring the Old Pre-Meds podcast. Let's, uh, let's do this again. We'll see you next time here on the Old Pre-Meds podcast.